All right, so, you know, let's get started a little bit. Hi, I'm Casey. I am the education and support lead from VISH. I have been a colorist for 17 years and I have been with VISH for five. Joining me today, I have Luke Huffstutter from Anastasia's Salon out in Oregon. Okay. And Luke, tell us a little bit about your salons and what you guys are all about. <laughs> Small question that I, I'll try and <laughs> keep it under an hour. Uh, no, okay. I, we're, we're um, I've owned um, Anastasia for 14 years. And uh, in February, we bought our second location, which is a wild, um, wild thing yeah. to go for a second location during the COVID madness. But um, we were growing. And so um, we had to, we needed more stations because in Portland, we're pretty um, COVID strict, I would say. Yeah. And um, we're really restrict, we're restricted by the six foot distancing in the salon. Mm -hmm. and we were out of stations. We were working 6.30 to 11 p.m. Um, to try and get everybody's schedules in. And so we bought another salon, which is just terrifying. And, um, but we're really excited to add that to our, to our business. Um, I also own a beauty school, a Summit Salon Academy here in yes. Portland. And my family's been in the industry for four generations. So my mom's a hairdresser, a retired hairdresser. My dad um, sold a beauty distributor um, when That's I was awesome. in high school and uh, they convinced me to buy, well, they, <laughs> mom, my mom told me not to, but my dad, uh, and I and my older brother bought a salon together. That's right. That's amazing. Yep. And I was, yes, shout out to the Summit Salons. Um, love working with everybody from Summit. You guys have, you know, such a great business model. And it's it's always fantastic to have a new Summit Salon in our network. Yeah. Um, so let's start off talking about like how you have set up your service menu and why did you choose to do it that way? Yeah, and you know, I, I think it's always important for me to say that you know I, I'm a tried and true Summit Salon, and uh, I was even a coach for Summit for ten years, and because um, I really believe in in the systems, and so but I you know there's a lot of ways to do things, and uh, we're not the only successful way of doing things. So um, sometimes I just I talk like our ways the only way, and I just, so I wanted to just say out loud that I don't actually believe that. I think there's lots of ways to do it, but hopefully, okay. hopefully, you know, you can get something out of, you know, the way we do it. So we believe in a a la carte menu and, okay. and we want it to be as simple as possible, which causes its own issues that we'll, we'll talk a lot about today okay. um, with, with communicating with the customer. But um, we want, we call them building blocks and we want our staff to be able to build whatever service they want to we want them to be really free to use and do whatever they need to do to create a beautiful look for their guest. And uh, to do that, we've created these building blocks and there's not that many building blocks. So they kind of take those building blocks, add them together to create a price point. And it's really great for the service provider in the company. Um, and we've had to learn how to really communicate with the guest because they don't understand the building blocks and it's unfair for us to expect them to understand that. Yes. Um, but an example would be someone would come in for a balayage and um, we have um, four different base services for a dimensional service. And so that's where it starts. And then obviously there's, um, you know, add on color, which Fish has made you know, perfectly easy um, to get that really dialed in. Yeah. And um, and then they'll do it, they'll add a toner. And typically, you know, lots of times with the lightning services, they're doing toners and a haircut and a treatment. And then all those things stacked together are, you know, the final price. Um, now, do you, with those building blocks, and I think you just brought up a really interesting point. You said the client doesn't know what the building blocks are. That's right. Do you have a separate client facing menu that you've maybe changed, you know, have you had to adjust it, change it, then the sort of behind the scenes a la carte menu that allow your stylists the freedom and, you know, to build their own ticket to help create, you know, 
a, a little bit more of a financial foundation for them. That's right. That's right. And we do have a different, like if you go out to our website, it's not yes. all of pricing, right? Because, you know, we call all our, uh, you know, all our lightning services, we call all of that dimension, right? Partial, full, luxury, celebrity dimension. And they're like, whoo, you know? And so we've really had to, and we are continuing to break it down in a more, uh, in an easier way. On the okay. website, we're adding more pieces of the building blocks under the price point so that they're okay. not, so they don't come into the salon thinking it's less expensive than it is um, because they they get confused, right? So if they yes. see the base price is this, and then they come in and they have, you know, essentially, you know, a toner of 40 grams and, and they need extra um, bleach and all of a sudden the ticket's a hundred dollars more, you know, that, yes. can feel, that can feel really icky to a, to a customer. Do you feel, so I, I was so excited that you were going to join because I knew you had these customer facing services that said luxury dimension. And uh, is there one that's like a Hollywood or something in there too? Yes, um, oh, we have a celebrity. Celebrity, right. thank you. Do you give descriptions of what that sort of entails on the website or is the front desk trained to say, oh, you want a celebrity really to sell the feeling of yeah. what they're booking. And then the stylist knows, okay, here are my components. Right. Um, we do have descriptions on the website and they're okay. very short. And in all honesty, you know, it's hard to tell the difference between them. You know, it's like a, yes. a full is, you know, a, you get to, you get high, you know, lightener all over your head and a, a, a celebrity is even more, you know, it's like, it's hard to help them understand what distinguishes those. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we were actually, um, I was just had a meeting recently about our online booking and, you know, we continue to make tweaks and changes to try and make it easier for the customer. And we're talking yes. about actually putting product amounts on the website as the distinguisher because okay. it, we think they might get that more than us trying to explain you know visually what yes. the difference is now that i think brings up a really excellent point because we're at this really interesting point in i think where our industry is with youtube and pinterest and instagram and the tiktoks and the the reels where people are able to be watching fully professional techniques and think, oh, well, I can, that's easy, I want that. Where they have no idea about their own texture type and density. And do you think that there is, by, by considering that with your service menu, do you worry about over-educating the client? I, that, I, I don't, I don't. Okay. I don't. Um, and tell me why. Tell me why you're not worried about that. Yeah, I mean, COVID's a great example. I and mean, we've had people doing their own hair for a full year. And they're, yeah. they're, they're showing up at the salon and get, needing to get it fixed, right? Like they, they, they learn. They learn, right? And <laughs> yes, they can do box home color and get certain looks. And some people figure it out. And that's all good. But I know that half the population doesn't want to figure it out for themselves. They want mm -hmm. it to be better than they can do it at home. I just can't be bothered worrying about um, that. You know, like yeah. what, this is the truth. What I know is that it's an experience and yes. that people want the experience. They want to be mm -hmm. taken care of. They want somebody to help them, to tell them, to coach them, to lead them. And, and that they can't do at home. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the other side of the too much education is they come in and they're like, well, I saw on the website that 45 grams is this. And so I would like, I want to stay there. And you know what? Hallelujah. Good for them. Okay. You know, I, think, I think that it's hard for them to be in control over the pricing. I tell jokes about it all the time. If you think about it, they come in, they sit in the chair, you start looking at pictures yeah. and dreaming and the stylist gets into it and they get into it. And then the stylist is like, okay, let's do it. And they walk over to the color bar. They never even talk about the price. You know, yeah. like that's what's often happening. And mm -hmm. the person has no idea what yes. this costs, what this is. And so, you know, 
if they are empowered to say, this is my limit, then we can work with them and say, okay, great. okay. If that's your limit, then this is what we can do. Let me show you some pictures because it is not the picture you're showing me. <laughs> okay. So that's, and you feel then like by putting, still keeping sort of your, your feeling, the selling of the feeling, the luxury dimension, the cel the celebrity dimension, but really getting into descriptions online of how much color this entails, what services live under that. Um, you're trying to give the client a little more feeling of control over their pocketbook and the end result. Yeah. And I believe that, you know, what we, we coach to our staff and I don't know, we're probably in some other question, but we coach our staff that we should always be providing options anyway. Okay. Because the yeah. guest doesn't know, right? So if they come okay. in for the base service of a full dimension, then we need to give mm -hmm. them an option that's close to that and an option that's more than that. And when it's presented, right? Like, hey, I can, um, I see the picture you want and for, you know, the full dimension price for $150, I can help you achieve this. And it won't be the okay. full look, but you know, like, you know, when you pull up into a mm -hmm. pony, there's gonna be pieces, but when you'll have the look, you just won't have the full shebang or yeah. we could go all out and it's $300. And you're going to look exactly like the picture, which would you prefer? And then you shut up and <laughs> uh, you, you're what, what blows my mind is how often they choose the higher price service. Mm -hmm. But what's great about giving them the options is that then they're choosing, right? When, when we yes. just get into the dream and we're like, awesome, that's $300, right? Like that, that does, that takes away the power from the guest to make their own choice they don't feel like they're in control. And I think that actually produces worse experiences for the customer. Yeah. Oh, well, I think it, you're right. It can lead to the over-promising and under-delivering yes. that. And now, let me ask you. Charging <laughs> all the way, yeah. you know, then you're worried about it, yeah. you know, because you didn't get that. They didn't say yes, right? I want that. Yes. Absolutely. I understand. And when they say you, yes, then you're free to like, have fun, not worry about it and give a better experience. So with the way that you have your service menu set up with, again, sort of the client facing service menu, selling the experience, but listing what's in it. Now, how do you account for stylist time? If the, if the, do you feel that having both of those with the a la carte side on the stylist and the client facing experiences, how I want to feel today, my luxury, my partial dimension, my celebrity dimension. How do you, do, do those line up time wise? How do you feel like you account for stylist time when something might be the three hundred dollars services that's going to take, you know, four hours, yeah. and something that's only going to take two and a, two and a half, you know? Yeah. Um, yes, I think the time, the the pricing and the timing match up for us. Yes. Right? Okay. Um, and, you know, obviously there's some, there are some services that are less per hour than mm -hmm. others, but I mean, we're really, one of our key metrics is watching our average ticket for the individuals okay. and for the salon as a whole. And our average ticket has done nothing but grow, um, for the last three years due to a lot of different reasons, but this coaching around, you know, giving two options the nice okay. thing about options is that if they, they take the lower price one, they're being paid really well. If they take the higher price one, they're like, you know. Being paid life, even better. Their life is blowing up, right? And okay. so it's not that everybody needs a $300 ticket, right? That's not what the goal is. Okay. And, um, it's that some people do. And that's what, you know, continues okay. to drive, drive your income forward. Now, would you say, I mean, I think what you just said too, would you be able to draw a direct correlation then between how you've set up this menu with the giving the options, having the dimensional services, but a la carte on the backside, this has really driven that average ticket price higher and higher and higher over the past few years? Yes. I mean, com okay. combined with what you're talking about, Pinterest and just yeah. the, the internet um, is pushing these uh, services that are mm -hmm. big, time-consuming, mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, the, between the two, right, embracing that and learning how to try and create an amazing guest experience that yeah. allows them to participate but not feel taken advantage of, um, okay. you know, is the key. And I can talk about all the times we don't do it right and the complaints <laughs> that and the yeah. frustrations of, from the guests. And I mean, that's where we're, the learning really comes from is... Yeah. you know, you see the same complaint over and over again. And you're like, okay, we've got to address this because that's, that's on us. You know, we've got to yeah. communicate differently to get a different result. How do you decide when it is time to raise the salon's prices with your services? You know, seeing what people, you know, over the past couple of years, what people are asking for, nothing's a straightforward highlight with a tone anymore. Yeah. Everything, you know, how did you decide it, it was time to say, okay, we have to start charging more for what we're being asked to produce. Sure. Well, I think um, there's a baseline cost of doing business yep. um, increase that has to happen. And we've been doing some sort of increase for the last 10 years, every year. Okay. So every year. And, and, and sometimes it's small and, and sometimes it's large. You know, we've done them where it's just a dollar per base service. Increase. Okay. $2 per base service increase. Um, Pre-COVID, the three years before COVID, we raised our prices um, in total almost 20%. Okay. So we were really aggressive pre-COVID. And I had this thought that, you know, we were, the economy had, we were in this bull market and the economy was growing, growing, growing. And, you know, you're reading like, God, I can't last forever. And so I was trying to take advantage of the, the booming economy Mm -hmm. because I wanted to get our prices to the right. I'd rather be above and pull back if there was a downturn than below in struggling. And so okay. I'm so grateful that that's what my thought process was because going into COVID, we'd already raised our prices over 20%. And so I was not worried about okay. the COVID, extra COVID charge or something like that. And then we delayed our normal price increase, which happens November 1st. Okay. We, we did it February 1st and we only did a dollar on our core services um, because we don't- But you had the PPE charges in there, you you know. No, we didn't, no. no. We oh, didn't. you didn't do any of that. Okay. No, like I said, I mean, we, we'd raise our prices 20, over 20%. Okay. And so we were charging- in a really great way. You okay. know, we didn't want to add these extra charges because we were worried about the experience. You know, we're already mm -hmm. feeling like we're, we were at the, you know, the top of the pricing for our type of salon, you know, a okay. big three salon. And so we didn't want to, you know, get into that yet. And then we did say this in February, when we raised our prices a dollar, that this is because of COVID, like we, we are. Okay you know, there are more costs. At the time, I didn't know if we were going to get the second draw PPP loan, which we did. And so, you know, that puts a lot of, takes a lot of pressure off because, mm -hmm. you know, we have more front desk than we've ever had to do all the extra stuff that we're doing. Um, so we do have more expenses because okay. of COVID, but we really felt like we'd raise our prices enough. And listen, I mean, we've done well through COVID, right? We were even... <laughs> We came back to work in June and, you know, June through December, we were basically, we were up 2%. Um, and then, you know, this year, you know, we were even in January and February and then March, we have, we had our best month ever. We beat our best month ever by 50 grand in March. I think a lot wow. of all are probably, I've heard a lot of salons saying they had their best months ever in March for whatever okay. reason, the vaccine, People are coming out of the woodwork, their hair's <laughs> jacked up, you know, so they're all doing $300 plus tickets to get their hair back to where <laughs> it was. Um, but we had a wild, wild march. Do you allow clients to self-book um, color services online? I, we do. We do. Okay. And, you know, I was. What are some I, of the common pitfalls that you see of clients self-booking color? There's a lot of pitfalls. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's a mess, honestly. Um, and it's super frustrating for the staff, uh, yes. in a lot of ways. Right. And, and I, I, I don't, I don't put down or begrudge the, the salons that are like, screw that. Like this is too yeah. much. Um, but for us, 
you know, we want to meet the client where they're at. And, you know, we've seen an increase in our new guests because of online booking oh, okay. um, significantly. You know, we're seeing uh, probably uh, 20% more new guests a month than we were seeing pre wow. booking. And I was, I mean, I was not an early adopter of online booking. We only have been doing it for two years um, okay. because I was worried about it, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, I talked to some folks that were doing it well and tried to learn some lessons from them. And then we continue to make tweaks to try and have a okay. Um, what are some of the tweaks that you've made? Because again, I feel like that's that balance between what an owner sees as a necessity, meeting the client where they're at, and then stylist thinking, ah, they booked a retouch, they're a full foil. That's right. What do I do with that? So how did you meet those challenges? I mean, there's so many elements, I think. I mean, you you heard us heard me talk earlier, you know, mm -hmm. we're changing the menu online. Um, we're adding in um, extra color to the cost online because okay. they're, they're self-evaluating and assuming even when you say from $150, that, does, that doesn't land for a consumer. No. Um, and so, you know, we've had to make tweaks like that. And then, you know, we use a, a, a software that emails our staff when something's booked online. And okay. so we are, we're having this conversation over and over and over again even still I had one on Friday with one of my team you know she had this service blow up on her and the guest was really frustrated it was way more than she thought it was going to be blah 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 and okay. I I called my staff and I said hey you know can I ask you some questions she's like absolutely I was like did you call the, did you call that person and she was like no I didn't I was like okay great so mm -hmm. we we push really hard on the, the service provider to reach out to the customer that's booking online. And that, okay. and we coach them, it's perfectly reasonable to move, change, or reschedule that appointment after you okay. talk. And that if we aren't talking to them, then you know we're increasing the chance that there's a misunderstanding. Yes. Right? And then we are offering our front desk to assist them, right? We okay. want stylists to lead that because it's their books and we want it's their them. time. Yep. But, you know, obviously they're busy, right? They can't always be making all the phone calls. If mm -hmm. they have five people book online, it's like, oh, it can be overwhelming. And so they do lean on the front desk to support them, right? If they're stuck on time. But the truth is somebody needs to reach out to them within three yeah. days earlier. If do, you, do you feel that there's any benefit if you're going to allow online client self-booking, which you said it's been a hugely successful for you, increased new clients by 20%. Is there any benefit to adding a caveat to that online? Like you're only reserving a space. Someone will call you back to make sure. Like, do you think clients would read that in an online book or they're just going to assume I've got this time. It's all good. Yeah. Or we're going to assume that it's all good. Okay. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I would anything, you know, we put a landing page before our booking page with like, okay. Hey, you need to know these things. Right? <laughs> like, um, yeah, that's great. To, to try and force them to read, you know, some of okay. the pieces of the puzzle, because again, you know, we need to help them Yes. We need to inform them, give them a better set of expectations so that we're not disappointing them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think I think the the consumer in general assumes that everyone should be um, as technological as Google, Amazon, and Apple. And you mm -hmm. know, when your when your stuff doesn't work, they get really frustrated, right? Yes. They don't they don't, yes. they don't they don't understand necessarily that the small business doesn't have the resources to rebuild an online booking website, or <laughs> you know, it's just like yeah, you know, it's so it's so challenge okay. so we just have well, to learning because my i guess i guess what i'm saying is the longer i put it off the lo the the more painful the learning is going to be okay as because in my opinion if i want to be you know have you know we're on our second location I, i'm i'm predicting we'll be on our third within two years you know if we want to be a 10 yes. million dollar business we we have to meet them there yeah. And then I have to do a good job of convincing my team and educating my team for, with the whys behind it, right? Okay. Hey, I know this 
<laughs> causes problems. I know it can be frustrating. And I know it even can cause client complaints when we're not all over it. But it's, if you mm-hmm. want your income goals, which I know all of your income goals, right? And you want the yeah. new guests to go with that and you don't want to have to have them all be referrals, then this is what we have to do. Yep. Let's, let's coach, let's talk, let's get better at it so that we're not behind. Instead, we're ahead. Well, and I think, you know, you said, so coaching your front desk sounds like that's a hugely important step for you as well as making sure that that front desk is a partner with the stylist in understanding your service menu, all, you know, the client facing the behind the scenes so that that front desk person knows, yeah, this doesn't look right. I feel like we're going to need to call her back and get this booked. Like, do you empower them to sort of take some of that on themselves or do they have to wait for direction? Um, both. Okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the front desk is a is a, a, something I think many salon owners are mm-hmm. you know, challenged by. I mean, we certainly are. Um, you know, we've got it's it's the the lifespan of somebody at our front desk is is shorter than you know um, our service mm-hmm. provider, and that means we have a lot of new people starting. You know, all the time, and, mm-hmm. and it takes a long time, really. Yeah really get the 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 details of you know we've got you know 50 hairdressers and that's yeah. a lot of humans to know all their special things well, right and it's taken you three years to perfect this service menu it is hard right. to get someone to understand it in a week of training you know but I think that you have to you know do well, what I'm, you can no, do that's right. my GM is you know she's an amazing human um, and, and, and she knows that we don't hire forever people at the front desk. Mm-hmm. That's not the goal. And so what that means is we have to have a training program. We have mm-hmm. to have a support system for those folks to empower them and support yep. them. Otherwise they have a bad experience and want to quit faster. So, um, we yeah, even, that's very that true. we're calling the front desk BFF. And so we had some oh. service providers, you know, sign up to say they would be BFFs. And um, so they do, you know, they'll do the person's hair and they will um, talk through the services. They meet with them multiple times to give them, you know, insights on the services from a service provider. My GM's not a service provider. And so though she's, you know, very proficient and excellent in all ways, it's nice to hear a service provider. I think that that is, a really adorable and very personal touch that you're adding, calling it the, you know, the BFFs that it makes, you know, you're creating team members, you're creating a family, you're creating a support system so that it isn't an us versus them, you know, that, cause we of course know in the moment, a stylist could be like, why did you let this get booked this way? And the poor front desk person is like, eek. But, you know, so I think having those, the groundwork of those relationships is, is, you know, yeah, the stylist explaining to this, you know, this is how, this is what luxury dimension entails. Right. This is what it means. And this is how I prefer this to get booked, you know, um, what I'd look, right. And, and this is the answers you're looking for to know if they need Mm -hmm. more time. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think it's, you know, what questions to ask when you hear us, you know, when you hear a client say this, yeah, you can say, yes, there and you know again all those great things um let's talk a little bit about pre-booking because i feel that with you know an a la carte service menu which is what you've really chosen it is super super important for stylists to be pre-booking while the guest is in their chair if they want that service to be perfect the next time and they've discussed options so maybe today was only option a next time will be the $300 option are you know what is your pre-booking percentage in your salon and are you encouraging your staff and your front desk to get those people pre-booked yeah it's one of the key metrics to allow them to grow through the levels and give themselves a raise Mm -hmm. um and but but online booking has brought that down pre-online booking we were averaging between 70 and 75 percent reservations Okay. Where the person left, right? And now we're down to like 62%, I think was okay. the last number I saw, uh, um, you know, in January. And it's definitely an online booking phenomenon. Okay. Uh, but you do, 
you know, that first more, more than half of our online bookings are new guests. And so, you know, that's one of the reasons we really need to call them, right? Uh, whereas, you know, repeat customers, if they want to be online booking customers, we're teaching the staff to literally, okay, pull your phone out. Let's get your next appointment booked today. Okay. And do and it on your phone, right? Okay. So I can show you exactly what to book so that you get enough time, right? Yes. So they pull out the phone, download the app or get on the website. And then the stylist is literally, you know, styling their hair and coaching them through it um, because that person really wants to book online, which is all good. Mm -hmm. but we need to teach them, you know, can we teach them how? Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing a lot of that happening um, at the chair to, you know, increase their, you know, knowledge and in booking things correctly. Um, but obviously we're still booking 62% of them before they leave. Right. And that, yeah. that's, a, that's a way for the, the staff to really provide what you're describing, right? Like, let's make sure we have this correct on the books. Yes. And time let's make sure we have this correct. Yeah. And, you know, I, of course, pre-booking and I've just, I've heard recently that there's a little bit of a turn away from pre-booking. Um, I had another salon owner say that to me that, you know, a lot of people are just like, oh, you know, I think maybe because of the turn, you know, more people are online that they're just like, oh, what's, what's the point of pre-booking? And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, you're not making sure that that future point, you're not guaranteeing your future money for, sure. you know, the stylist or the salon and yeah, making sure that it's booked the way you want it to be booked mm -hmm. to get that, you know, client the way. It's actually, it's actually less work for you yes. if yes. you rebook them. Yeah, absolutely. I, agree. I have this belief that customers come in more often when you're booking them right before they yep. leave. Um, yes. that, I mean, if they're, you know, if they're anything like me, you know, like I'll go weeks after I'm supposed to get a haircut because I'm busy. Right. And yep. so by having it reserved out, then they actually probably come in two times more a year or, or, mm -hmm. you know, or color services one, one, one or one or more times a year, which if you add up over 60% of your clients, if they're coming in one more time a year, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, you know, I think if, if you're going to then, yeah, kind of wanting your staff, even with a la carte services to really be selling the experience that to me is part of selling the experience is you're, is creating the experience of also I'm going to take care of you let me do this for you right now and create it's sort of the close of the experience yeah. you know is for that is getting them pre-booked yeah. um, and I also think the the we call the pre-book a reservation because it sounds you know prettier and yes. uh, you know it's like uh, you reserve your hotel room and you reserve a yes. restaurant. Those are experiences. You you book an appointment with your doctor, right? So we 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 also are trying to like use the right words that enrich that experience, right? And so, um, you know, they're they just they they've got to. We've got to help our service providers see those benefits so that they can mm -hmm. struggle through the communication issues that may arise um, yeah. in asking someone. But I also think it's really important that people are being invited back, right? Like there's this yes. feeling of, I want you to come back. Whether you book right now or not, I don't care, but I need you to know, I really want you to come back. I'd love to put you on the books because I enjoy spending time with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's easy for a customer to think that we don't want them back. It's a oh, yeah. business, Casey, you know, they, yes. they're two individuals, right? We're serving the public. They're all nuts. And then we've got um, our service providers who have their own feelings, right? And it's like being in a, in a, it can be like being in a bad relationship where you're assuming what the other person's thinking. Yes. And we never want to do that. No. Because we, well, assuming what the other person is thinking, assuming what the other person has in their wallet Yes. not clarifying. And then I think to not having the tools of, okay, here's how I'm going to achieve and have, and be able to lay it out for you. So if, you know, looking at that picture saying, okay, that's going to require a full head of baby lights with TZ foils in between. So that's already two techniques there, Mary yeah. Jane, yeah. then see how in this picture you want that softness. That's called a shadow root. I'm going to need to do that then you've just expressed to me, if you see gold in your hair, 
there will be tears. So I am now going to have to do two tone, you know, we'll see how it lifts through your COVID box color. You know, there's, you have to give them the tools to find that middle ground and yeah, lay it out for, I think, you know, lay it out for them. Boom, 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 service wise. And there's lots of tools, you know, I've seen even like online little consultation tools where you can write down the techniques and the prices. How do you feel about something like that? Like on a clipboard of saying, okay, you said you wanted this, this, and this, here's your option A, here's your option B, handing it to the client and then sort of letting them check, this is the one I want. Hey, I would love that. Personally. Okay. Uh, that sounds amazing. I think, uh, um, I think the staff won't do it. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to choose that battle, but we do require, we re actually ask our staff to have their phones on them so that yes. they have a calculator so that they can add things up. We don't, we want them to give the totals. We don't want them to give mm -hmm. all the pieces. Okay. Uh, this doesn't feel as good, to, you know, like mm -hmm. I need to do this and it's this much, this, and this is this much and this and this much. And then we'll probably do it a toner and there might be some extra charges, right? Like when you do that, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel as good as just taking a second being like, okay, so we talked about this, 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 and this, just give me a second. Okay. So the total for that would be $290. How's that sound? Right. Okay. We want them to give that total number. Um, and so they're doing it verbally. Uh, okay. Although I love the idea of writing it down. I think that would be yeah. I mean, there. It's just something that's just, it's official. It's, you know, it's like presenting it for them to choose. I love all that stuff. Um, you know, yeah. you can create it, but you know, if, if um, they feel like it's going to take too much extra time, then mm -hmm. those things usually go out the window pretty fast. That, yeah. I mean, getting the staff buy-in is always the, the key component to any of this, right? That staff buy-in. We've got owners um, on the call. We've all, you know, implemented yeah. a lot of things, including <laughs> and, you the, know, uh, had to get the buy-in. Yes, from, they had to get the buy-in. for. So what is it? It's the WIFM. So what's in it for me? Got to find that buy-in. Um, I would love to open it up to any of our participants. What questions do you have for Luke or myself? on service menus, um, on anything we talked about. I would love to see, uh, we'd love to talk about it. So send us in any questions um, into the chat. That would be great. But I have actually, I've, I've toyed around. I had used kind of that consultation card. Yeah. And it was, it is the kind of, we even I think had them laminated at one point. Um, they were good for, I think, you know, it's, they were good for a week or two and then they get shoved in a drawer. And I think honestly, you know, to this conversation, we are encouraging this and it's happening digitally. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of pre-consultation happening now. Yeah. Either DMs, text messages, um, even virtual consultations. We, you know, us encouraging our staff to call somebody who books online. It's the same thing, right? Like you get okay. to that conversation beforehand and you know you'll look at these text strings and you know like they're going back and forth with the customer and then starting to quote right and it's a okay it's, it's definitely a better better options they're able to provide those options in a written way when they're doing when they're doing those pre um pre-visit communication i've got a couple of questions here yeah. Um, one is, what are your thoughts on upfront payments for online bookings to help reduce no-shows? That's yes. an excellent question. I see nothing wrong with that. I think taking a deposit is guaranteeing that that person is going to show up. Yeah. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. I don't disagree. Um, we, we don't do it automatically. We can. Okay. Our, our, our okay. software allows us to do it automatically. But we often, for large tickets, do call and take deposits. So, okay. um, you know, the, the, the service provider or the front desk will call and say, hey, you've got, you know, this is a, this is a big service. It's reserving a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And we require a deposit for that. We usually take 50 bucks. Um, okay. But because it's easy to keep $50, um, yeah. if somebody doesn't show up, 
Um, so that's where we've been living with that. And I, I totally, mm -hmm. I totally agree. You know, um, cancellations amongst online booking is higher than yes. not. Right. And so, yes. Um, we want to put, implement things that are going to protect us while still being, you know, gracious to the customer. So you, with an online booking, you're not taking a, a deposit for across the board online bookings. It's only for appointments over a certain amount of time. That's right. For us, okay. it's $200. Yeah. So at my last salon, um, uh, my last salon here in Chicago, so shout out to Indira. Um, it, it was actually the smaller, because, you know, someone booking an online shampoo blow dry style, those care. were the appointments, you know, 45 minutes, they were constant no shows. And that's 45 minutes. You sure. know, that's a, and, and those were the ones that automatically took credit cards um, for holding them. Those, those shorter, especially like that's because that's a whim. That's a, you know, an in the moment, instant gratification kind of an appointment. Someone who's trying to book a three hour color, you know, yes, that's, that's going to require a deposit, but that's a little different than those, you know, instant gratifications that leave, you know, two or three 45 minute no shows on a client's day or a stylist day. That's a lot of money out the window. Um, so I have another question. What is the most valuable description distinctions you've added to your website? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think for us, we had to get clearer about which services were included, right? So okay, the it's it's um, what's a balayage? What's a ombre? What's a highlight? What's a TZ light? What's a, you know, like it's so, yes. there's so much that goes into that and trying to, and we keep modifying, right? So we've added, um, you know, parentheses with some of the services, <laughs> right? We've added, we've taken that away and then you put some of the base, different types okay. of base services okay. rather than, you know, for us, you know, you get on some of these menus and the menus are like this long, you know, it's like balayage, full balayage, half balayage, TZ light. And it's like, it's, it's as overwhelming to me, yes. as, you know, having four base service charges and, you know, putting the um, different types of services that fall under mm -hmm. the categories. That's been really helpful for us. I think that that I, you know, I agree with you. I think that there's so much merit to a la carte, but you can get analysis paralysis with some of these service menus that you're just like, hey, how to, how, I don't know. And, and again, I, I think that asking a client to understand what their hair needs can lead to a lot of missed bookings. So I like, you know, you have sort of a category, here's what might be included and you know, do you find, who do you ask to make those descriptions for you? Are you doing it as a stylist doing it? Do you know, did you kind of come together on what is grammatically correct? You know? It's a both and for sure. Yeah. It's yeah. A, <laughs> constant. yeah. We're, we're actually, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of like, okay, so you go shoo, shoo, shoo with the hair and it creates this tuft and then you paint the stuff out the red. That's that doesn't read so well or professional on a right. uh, right. but you okay. understood what I meant if I was in front of you going shoo 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 and then there's stuff hanging out and yeah. we paint that and then it creates a very soft look. That's right. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's all a tweak. I'm one of the experiments that we were just talking about. Now, when I say we, I have a, a group in the salon, they're called we call them the yeah. advisory board, and we meet every other month and they're all volunteers and we just talk about problems, right? Because I want the stylist perspective. I want them to have input. And one of the things we're thinking about is taking away some of the shorter services. Okay. Uh, so like we won't, we're going to take away partial dimension, partial okay. anything, because they don't, they're picking the one that's the lowest price. Yes. And it's not, you know, it's well, lots of times it's not what they're looking for. And so- okay maybe we should just not offer that uh, and see what happens. So those are yeah. the kind of continual things that we just keep being like, okay, okay, let's try this for two months 
and see what happens. And then I'll meet with that group again and ask them if they saw any results from it. But that's, okay. that's the hard part. You know, it's that kind of consistency, right? Yes. To, yeah. to come back and talk about it and keep digging into it. It's really hard to pull off. And, you know, lots of owners are behind the chair and, you know, they're trying to, they're essentially working three jobs just by mm-hmm. owning a salon. And so, you know, some of that stuff can be really annoying. The nice thing about being behind the chair is that you're in the experience. And so yes. you can learn from that where I can't. Um, and so I have to have, you know, service providers giving me feedback. Um, in relation, I've, you know, I've had a few salons that I've recently helped move to time-based booking. Mm-hmm. And, and then they're still using Vish. Yep. And they're using, you know, Vish to help sort of the, the product charge, seeing the labor and the, and the service, I'm um, sorry, the goods and the service. And how do you feel about time-based services? You know, so someone yep. books two hours of your time, what you get done in that two hours, you get done. And yeah. it's. I, I, I think that, first of all, I think it's, it's, it's awesome, um, you know, in a lot of ways. Um, and it has its pros and cons as well. Okay. Um, we really do ha- want to be personally. We want to be have a combination. Okay. Of time. We want to be thinking about the time, right? We're yeah. charging based on product and time. And okay. so um, we, when we went to Vish, we actually added a service into our menu called extra application time. Okay. So, you know, a great example is we have um, a guest who gets um, product wise, they get a partial dimension, right? They're only using 20 grams of lightener, but their hair density is crazy. And it's very hard to apply hair to their, to their head. And so that service provider actually adds on a extra application okay. time for that guest because and you <laughs> I heard a kid's voice that I wasn't supposed to hear. Um so when um so when that happens they need to be able to add time. What we don't want, you know, what Vish does so well is it gives us exactly how much it costs. But when I guess what I was gonna say is we put times on all our services. Okay. Okay. A partial dimension is a 30 minute application. A Mm -hmm. full dimension is a, um, is a 45 minute application. And that's our, some of our staff are slower, right? And that's not, that's fine. We actually, it's okay. If that's how you want to live, that's how you want to live. And so we would have them make their base time, you know, 15 minutes slower. And so then they know if something takes me more than my base time, then I have to charge for that because yep. it's not me. Normally this takes me 30 minutes, but with this guest, it takes me 45. And so we okay. have, to, we have to, we have to add that to the price and we need yep. to be able to communicate that well, which is you have a beautiful head of hair <laughs> and you are so blessed and lucky to have it. And the con of that is it takes more time to do your hair. And so the cost today is this. And that goes, that's the blessing of of having an a la carte menu is that you can, again, have the building blocks to sort of create that perfect ticket for the guests that works for the stylist, that works with their budget and, you know, is something that can be repeated. Because I think that consistency and, you know, wise there's, I know there's been statistics, why clients leave a salon a lot of times is yes, they think they aren't really wanted back or welcome back, or they think that there's, you know, the client, the stylist is really apathetic. Yeah. And when you're creating excitement about what that next service, and you have the tools with your service money to say, okay, we're going to do this, this, and this, and then next time we'll do this, this, and this, yes. you're creating those, you know, those feelings for the client of, oh, wow, I can't wait to come back. Yeah. And, you know, that's awesome. Um, so to, you know, kind of close it up here a little bit today, wh- if you could give one piece of advice to some salon owners out there um, who might be struggling with how to price and offer a really, you know, consistent message with their service menu, what do you think the best piece of advice would be? 
simplify, 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 you know, keep it simple, sweetheart. Yeah. You know, and, and, and especially to the, to the customer, you know, you're better to have less so that you can talk to the person than to have more and have them be overwhelmed and not know mm -hmm. what to do. Um, that, that would be my, the thing that we've just continued to see is like, how do we make this simpler? How do we give less choices so it's easier to make a choice? And, um, and then how do we protect ourselves by, you know, being involved and not just crossing our fingers and hoping it works out? That's fantastic. Um, we might have time for one more question out there. Does anyone in our viewing audience have anything else they'd like to know from Luke or myself before we sign off for today? It's been so fantastic seeing you. I feel I like I haven't seen you in forever. I, I know, see because we saw each other so much for a while. I know. As I said, I'm like, we were setting up the first Anastasia's and I was like, every week. It's my daily call with Luke. That's right, that's right. Um, yeah, I know I'm high maintenance, but you guys have all been so nice. <laughs> we have one more question. Do you incorporate a color cost to your stylist commission structure? Um, no, we don't. Um, okay. We don't, um, I just, we did have it. With, I, when I bought the salon, we had it. Um, and then we've slowly gotten out of it. Okay. I think, you know, um, I do have some opinions about this and I, so I don't want to, like I said, I don't begrudge anybody for doing it their way. Mm -hmm. um, for me, what shows up is confusion for the staff. And when there's confusion, there's, um, they make up stories about what's happening and why. And um, often those stories are negative. And yeah. so um, for us, we want that, the, their pay to be as clear as possible. And so in my opinion, it's better to have a lower commission rate than to have a color um, chart. Uh, yeah, a back, uh, kind of a back bar cost there. Um, because and then all it does is lower their commission, right? Yeah. And so yeah. to me, it's more important to be, you know, as transparent as possible. Um, and that that's helped me retain staff more than get new staff doing it another way. Yeah. What is your number one tip for getting the most out of Vish? Gosh, I'm kind of obsessed with fish right now. And um, uh, so, and, and, you know, I mean, I've spent a lot of time with my staff um, trying to help them get as obsessed with it as me. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, we're getting a lot out of it unexpectedly, looking at our services and, and learning which services aren't making us any money. Um, so like, uh, we do pulp riot for our fashion colors and all of a sudden I know so much more <laughs> than I did. <laughs> and, uh, it's been really super helpful for us to reevaluate yeah. how we're charging for some of these specialty services okay. where in the end we were really losing money. Do the salon company was losing money doing those services. So that for me been a really fun, um, piece of the puzzle I didn't really think was going to happen, but it's been really eye-opening. I hear that from a lot of salon owners and that, yeah, looking that they're like, I had no idea that my staff was using, right. you know, this much color for retouches. Where are they even putting all that color? I had no idea, you know, and I love hearing when they're like, I had no idea. And I was like, well, that's why we're here. Cause now you do have an idea. And isn't that cool? Yeah, and, and it's going to help people make a better living, you know, and yeah. uh, and help us get better at the communication needed during those consultations for these really extraordinary services. So, well, you guys are extraordinary, and I so love having you as part of our network. And until you know the next time, it has been so much fun hanging out with you for the past hour. Um, thank you for being a part of this today, and thank you for being a part of Vish, hey. uh, and thank you for everyone who joined us. Yeah, I really appreciate the um, chance to chat about the business that I love so much and share it with other people. And, um, you know, I hope everybody, you know, keeps keeps refining their service menu so that people spend so much more money. <laughs> I agree with you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Take care.